guys, it's Emily, and this video is going to be something a little different than what I normally do. Um, a lot of you don't know a lot about me, or anything like that, nor that, so I just kind of wanted to do this video and tell you a little bit about myself. Um, this might be a relatively long video. Um... Starting back when my birthday is May 14th, um, 1997, so that makes me very about um, 18 years old. I honestly don't feel this old. It's really weird. I am a senior in high school, and that stresses me out. <laughs> I'm doing relatively like well in school. It's just the aftermath of getting out of school is kind of weighing on my shoulders right now. Um... I see a lot of people do these kind of videos, um, but you know, everybody's different, everybody, I don't know. I feel like nervous in front of the camera. I always get so nervous. That's another thing you guys don't know. Um, I feel like in my singing videos, I hold back a lot. Um, I guess with my talent, I don't know. My voice is giving me a lot. God, I can't even speak. I'm so nervous. But, um, I mean, there's like... You know, like, when you're making this video, there's no one watching you, but the point is, like, you're making it for someone and other people are going to see it, and I feel like that thought just made me, like, nervous. I don't know. I get really nervous in front of the camera. I don't know if anyone else does or if I'm the only one. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, again, I'm a senior in high school and I'm 18 years old. Um... I am the oldest of three younger siblings. I have two younger siblings and a younger brother. Well, actually, I have two younger sisters and a younger brother. Um, I have a brother that is a good old 14 years old. He will be 15 in July. And then I have, his name is Luke, or Lucas. And then I have a middle sister. Her name is Zoe. And she is a good 13 years old, and she's really crazy. She's very, very obsessed with Shawn Mendes. I don't know about you guys, or if you even know who that is. Hopefully you know who that is, because if not, you just see him on the front page. You can look it up, because he's fantastic. But she is obsessed with him, and it's so cute. Like, she fangirls over everything that he does. And then I have a younger sibling. My youngest sibling, her name is Cadence, and she is 10 years old. I am the oldest, which means I have a lot of responsibility put on my shoulders, as do all oldest siblings. I mean, I guess if you're a twin, I don't know how that works, but I don't know. I feel like the oldest always gets the most power. But anyway, my parents met, my mom, I guess they were like 23 and my dad was 21, so my mom was older than my dad. Um, mom is a Taurus. I'm a Taurus. My mom and I are like 41 years and a day apart, I guess. I don't know. Wait, no. You split that in half, right? Okay. Anyway, enough about that. Her birthday is a day before mine, but she was born in 73 and I was born in 97, so there you go. She went to labor on her birthday. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but anyway. Um, my parents got married. All was good and dandy. And then I was born a year later. And then, you know, some personal things got in the way. Um, let me know if you guys want to know what happened with my parents' marriage or not. Because they're not together anymore. Um, after I was about a year old, I, my parents got divorced. Because my dad um, was unfaithful. Or something of that matter. Kind of glad I don't, but you know, I don't really care. Years later, my dad gets remarried, has my brother, and then later gets divorced. My mom gets remarried and has both my sisters. Um, uh, my dad is no longer married to the woman that he was married to, but my mom is married to my sister's dad still. A good, um, I was about like three years old when he came into the picture, so he's been there for about a good while. 
and um, there's a lot behind that. But um, well, I I don't know. I guess I'll kind of skip because you know my life was okay, pretty good for a while. And then I got into elementary school. I went to three different elementary schools because we moved a lot. And yeah, but anyway, I met this girl in the fourth, the fourth, well, I saw her in third grade, but I didn't really know her very well, um, so in the fourth grade, as you've previously seen on my channel, her name is Lauren Evans, um, I met her in the third, in the fourth grade, don't let her lie to you, I met her in the fourth grade, and something just clicked with us, we were just like, at first, we met because I had a best friend, and, like, Lauren just so happened to be, like, wearing the same shirt as her. So, I, was, I don't know. Girls are weird. Girls are, I don't know. Girls are, like, some girls are mean. I don't know what happened. But, anyway. I was going, I saw her at recess, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go talk to her. She's like, you know, she's wearing the same, she's wearing the same shirt as my best friend. So, I was like, what's happening? Like, why am I doing this? So, I walk up to her, and I'm like, look, why are you wearing the same shirt as her? Like, a malicious little girl that I wasn't. I was always a good, like, good kid. I don't, I don't know where that came from. I guess that has to do with tying into yourself who your friends are and who you should be friends with and who you really, who just isn't a good influence on you. Um, so anyway, something happened. Me and the other girl that, like, sent me over there in the first place, we are, we're no longer friends. Um, well, not as good as friends as me and the girl that I had walked up and asked her, which was Lauren. And ever since then, we kind of just been really good friends. Um, we would, like, every time there was an ice storm or a snow day or we just didn't want to go to school or our parents were like, hey, you can stay home today, blah, blah, blah. Or we would just play sick or, you know, I don't know. We were always together. I mean, always. I was staying at her house. She was staying at my house, you know. We were always with each other. And that was like that through middle school, I think. Like, we were decently good. Like, we were good friends in middle school. Um, middle school was kind of tough for me. Um, I don't know if you can tell by my videos, but I'm a very um, quiet person, especially when I meet new people or I feel like I'm uncomfortable in a situation. I'm going to be quiet. Um. I don't really talk first. Like, I'm not the kind of person that's just gonna walk up and be like, hey, what's up? It's me. What's up? That's not me. Like, I'm gonna sit in the corner until, like, if you wanna talk, you're coming up to me, or I'm gonna, like, get the courage that I've never had and just come up to you and be like, you know what? Hey, what's up? I think we should be friends. Like, I don't know. I get so nervous. I don't know. I get anxious around. I don't know. Big groups of people that's like kind of scary, but uh, they don't really scare me. It's just like new. I don't know. I'm making a mess of my whole story today. And I'm very sorry for my viewers that are watching this. But um, anyway, on with story. Okay, so freshman year, um, going into high school, I was like, yes, I was like, let's get out of middle school. Let's make a difference. I'm tired of these people that I've been going to school with for these good three years, and then. Come to find out, I have to deal with them for another s four years. So I have to deal with them for seven years of my life. So now that I'm a senior, oh my gosh, okay. Let's just start back to freshman year. Okay, freshman year, a lot of stuff happened. I gained some really good friends. Um, Lauren, I don't know, something happened like after, during middle school, her parents got divorced and she got into a really like depressed stage and I don't want to like share too much of her information on here but she got to a stage where like I don't know I'm the type I'm I don't know what happened I feel like I distanced myself because I didn't want to see her go through pain that really wasn't the best thing that I could have done I don't like seeing people that I care about in pain I really don't and I don't know what to do about it like I don't know how to like, fi help or fix them. I always feel like I'm the person that has to fix everything. Like, I hate being that person. I really do. I feel like I always have to fix everything. It's a lot of pressure being put on someone's shoulders to feel like they have to do it. Like, they have to fix everything. Okay, and that has to tie in with stuff that you're going to hear about here in a second. Um, 
after freshman year, I I don't know what happened. Everybody like, like went their own way. I didn't really have many friends. I really didn't. Sophomore year, I met some of the best friends that I could ever have, and their names are Kyla, Katie, Angela, and I had Devin. Devin was my, like, best friend, you know, like, we were, like, BFFs. Um, he was the only guy, I guess, in the group, and you know what? Me and him, I don't know. We were all close, but I, like, we were, like, like, we just knew, like, we just got each other, if that makes sense. Um, we were really great friends. Um, me, at first, I didn't really know Kyla. The only one that I'd really, like, met and talked to, I had middle school with Angela, like, I had a class with her, so I kind of knew of her, but, like, I didn't really know her, know her, so then I was like, ah. But anyway, we, like, became this really big, like, group of, good group of friends. Like, we were really good. And then junior year comes. Well, me and Devin were really good friends. And, you know, like, I don't know. I guess my, I guess, I don't know. Something happened. Our judgment got clouded. And we dated each other. It didn't work out. And I lost my best friend. And, like, you know, to this, still to this day, it still sucks still sucks really bad especially when you see somebody that you used to be like this with and now you're just like like you're a wreck <laughs> like what is it what is it what is life like what is even happening to me i don't understand i don't i don't get it why like i would still love to be like his best friend like even though we did like that's when like i don't know people change over time like you just don't know anymore and so going into junior year we had dated over the summer, so going into junior year was, like, a little weird. And we just so happened to schedule some of our classes the same. So, I had class with him, and I had class with Kyla. I had chorus, because, you know, I'm singing. I had chorus with Katie. So, like, we were, like, we were, like, bomb. Like, we were really good friends. Um, we were all just a really good group of friends. The only thing that sucked is... I believe it's junior year. Junior year, our friend Diana, she got transferred to a different school. Angela had to go to a different school, I guess, because of because our like district, our redistrict. Re so whoever went to this school, like half of them went to the different school, so it all just got messed up. But you know what? Every time I see her, we still act like like we still like we just know like we still just click like we still just have a good time and stuff. Um. Kyla graduated early, and Katie is, I believe, she's homeschooled. Um, I haven't talked to her in a while. I haven't talked to a lot of them in a while. Um, I don't, I don't talk to any of them, like, now. Unless it's, like, sometimes, like, you know, like, it just, like, every time I see them in person, it'll be, like, hi or something, but, like, I don't ever really see them very much. But anyway, back to the story. Junior year of high school. Okay, I don't remember. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry for that. But anyway, junior year of high school, during the end of junior year, um, during the winter, like right as the new year started, January 29th, well, I'm going to back it up a little bit. My mom, she has a chronic lung disease. It is called cystic fibrosis, and I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it or any of that, but I believe it's when certain parts of your body overmake mucus, if that makes sense. Like, you, eventually, over time, your lungs kind of, like, deteriorate, I guess, because of everything that's happened to them. My mom has been pricked and pruned and just, like, devoured. Like, she has been in and out of the hospital my whole entire life. But junior year, it really started started to get really bad then you have this flap that's on like the your I guess it connects your throat to your stomach I don't I'm sorry if I'm very illiterate and very stupid sounding but there's a flap on there and hers she kept aspirating back up so it kept going back into her lungs which damaged her lungs even more it wasn't necessarily her disease it was because of that and just another, some other things that had just piled on, and eventually she got put into the ICU in the hospital, and she was in there for a while, and her oxygen level was only like 25%, like she was only getting 25% oxygen. 
Like, do you understand how crazy that is? You, you get full oxygen. Like, you breathe fine. Like, you know, and some of you watching this may not. Like, you may have some kind of condition that no one knows about. Maybe you just don't want people to feel sorry for you or to judge you or anything. But you know what? It's hard. It's hard. It's so hard to see somebody that you love so much hurt so bad. It really is. Um, on January 29th, she something happened. Um, she was already in the hospital. They called up at the hospital. They were like, you know what? There's been like an accident or like or something, and, um, this woman, her lungs matched my mom's, like, she got put on the wait list for a lung transplant, something happens, and this woman passes away, and she decides to donate her organs, and it just so happens that her lungs match my mom's, so we were, like, I remember I was, like, sitting on my bed, and then I get, like, this phone call, or, and they're, like, my stepdad runs upstairs, and he's like, look, they're about to put your mom, they're going to prep her for surgery. This is a 12-hour surgery. Like, it's so crazy to think of somebody else's organs being put into someone. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but I think of the craziest stuff. It's so crazy. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry if this video is getting long. I'm sorry. I'm saying sorry in advance. Okay, but anyway, this, so she goes to the surgery, everything decides, um, everything turns out okay. Then she has to stay in the hospital for, she's in the hospital for a total of six months after her surgery. She had to get a trach put in because of that flap. They had to go in and fix, like, make, shut it so it didn't damage her new lungs that she just got. So everything has seemed to be fine. Um, then... Then, um, February, not this year because it's March 2016, not last year. It was last year. It's been a year since last January that she got her lungs taken out and she got a new pair put in. So she had her lung transplant. February, um, of last year, 2015, she started having signs of rejection from her lungs. She, um, she had to go through this uh, process called phoresis, which is where they take, they circuit out, they like, I don't know how to explain it, they put antibodies, like antibodies in your body to fight off rejection. So they were like cycling it out. It's kind of like chemo treatment, but for bad antibody, antibodies. And I can't even speak. Like, this is so... I'm sorry. I just... I'm sorry. But anyway, it's where they kind of filter it out. And to the, at this point, um, she didn't really have much of an immune system. So, the side effects... Okay, I'm going to start kind of like... This is so hard to explain. Especially because I've never talked about it. Like, in depth before. Or in front of a camera. Or mostly in front of anybody. Um... Uh, okay, anyway. February of 2015, um, I think it was January, or February 15th, it's about 11 o'clock at night, she seems to be okay, like, she's getting some side effects from the, um, phoresis, so she's, like, just kind of hanging out, like, you know, like, she's got some, she feels, kind of feels like she has the flu, or a cold or something like she doesn't seem like she's like really really sick um i come home from a friend's house and she gives me like my valentine's day stuff because i i had stayed at a friend's house on valentine's day and um i come home and i'm just like you know like hanging out downstairs and stuff and then i go in i come home or whatever and we're all just like hanging out watching tv and stuff and she asked me, she's like, Emily, will you go get me some lemonade? And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah, sure. So I go in there, and I get this big red cup. And I get this big red cup, and I fill it up with lemonade, and I go take it to her. And I'm like, you know what? I love you. Or I don't even remember what I said. I was just like, here you go. So I gave it to her. 
I go upstairs. It's about 11.30 or so, almost 11.40, almost 12 o'clock. And it's like snowing outside, so we don't have school tomorrow. We don't have school the next day. Well, we might have school, but I didn't go to the library. But, um, so I stay up till 3 o'clock watching the originals on Netflix. And, you know, I called Michael because an ambulance, like, showed up at our house around 11 or so. Mom goes to the bathroom. She comes back. She's out of breath. They call the ambulance. The ambulance comes, picks her up. I don't know the details of what happened in the ambulance. All I know is that they had to resuscitate her, which means they have to shock you to bring her back to life. Um, and then they get to the hospital. Supposedly, they keep her stable. Michael calls me. I call him about 1 o'clock. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. Like, I haven't heard from him, so I'm, like, kind of worried. So I call up there. I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, well, they had to resuscitate her, but she's stable right now. I'm like, okay, so she's okay. I stay up past 3. I don't, he said that he would call me back, but he never called me back. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, it's 3 o'clock. You know, if something was, like, really, really wrong, he would have told me. So I just, I turn off everything and I go to bed. Then he comes home. 6.30 in the morning. Wakes up all of a sudden. Me and my two sisters. We all have the same mom, but different dads. He comes downstairs. He comes and wakes us up. Brings us all downstairs. And we're all sitting on the couch. And, you know, like, I, I just know. Like, I just knew. He says, your mom passed away this morning. And, you know, like, my little sister is like, I'm just, like, stunned. Like, I'm just, like, I'm just, like, shocked just sitting here. Like, did this really just happen? Like, is he really saying this? And, um, my little sister just started, like, bawling. You know, like, they're just hysterically, like, crying. And, like, I feel like I'm, like, sitting here and I'm, like, I should be reacting. Like, I don't understand, like, why I'm just sitting here, like, like, she was just there. Like, she was just sitting in the chair. Like, she was just okay. Like, I'm sorry. I don't normally talk about this. But anyway, so, he tells us and everything. So, we're just all kind of, like, stunned. I'm dating this guy named Josh, and, uh, I don't even know what to do. Like, I just, like, go get my phone, and I'm just, like, I call my dad, and I'm just, like, like, that's when it hit me. I called him, and I was, like, she's gone. Like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, I don't know how to react. Like, I don't, like, this doesn't even, like, this is just, this is even real. Like, I don't even know what's happening. And I just called him and I was like, she's gone. She, like, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm freaking out. So he's like, he like, I don't know. I don't even remember the conversation. He like starts crying or I don't remember what happens. I get off the phone and I call Josh, which is my boyfriend. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I just saw him the, like the night before, like the night into the night, if that makes sense. Like, I had just seen him, like, at 10 o'clock the night before, so I'm just like, this is so weird. Like, I call him, I call him over and over and over again, because, you know, he, like, he's sleeping, and, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get a hold of him, like, I don't know what to do, so I'm, like, really worried. I call him, and I'm just like, mom had to go to the hospital, and... Like, she's just gone. Like, she passed away. Like, she died. Like, I'm just, like, hysterically, like, bawling my eyes out on the phone. Like, I'm just, like, what is happening? Like, why is this happening? Like, are, are you, like, this isn't real. Like, that's the first thing that popped in my mind. I was, like, like, stop messing with me. Like, this isn't, this isn't a joke. Like, this isn't funny. Like, just stop. Like, I really, like, could not get my brain to wrap around the fact that she is not there. Like, I can't even explain to you that feeling. It really sucks. It really does. So, about a week or so later, we go in for her visitation. Um, 
we dressed her in a green dress kind of thing that she liked to wear, black leggings, and her makeup and stuff was all done, and her hair was fixed. By the way, she was like really, really skinny because of everything that she'd been through. Um, that's the first time I'd seen her since the night that I gave her lemonade. We got to go in for everybody else. Um, so we all kind of walked in together. Um, we're all kind of just like together. And, um, we walk in, and, like, I just feel like, like, I was there, but, like, I wasn't, and I, like, I had big old knots, like, on my head, like, for breaking out, because, like, I was so, like, like, at that point, like, I had cried so much, like, I just felt like nothing else would come out, until I got there, and I just saw her laying there. Like, I feel so much, like, guilt, like, not guilt, but, like, regret that I didn't, like, I should have been there. I should have done something, but, you know, like, there's nothing you can do in that kind of situation. There's really not. It really sucks. And then the next day we had a sermon, like a, we had her funeral, the pastor spoke, all these people come through the line and they're like, I'm sorry, you know what, I'm sorry you have to go through this, but you know, like, no matter what they say, you're never going to feel safe, you're never going to feel okay, you're just not. So the day of her funeral... You know, like, I'm like, I'm like, watching myself, like, I don't even feel like I'm really there. I'm just like, this isn't, this, this isn't real. I'm not even, like, I'm not here. Like, I'm just like, I'm still like, this isn't even, like, real. Like, she's just pranking us. Like. Then we played two songs at her funeral after the pastor talked. And when this happened, when the songs were playing, people, like, came up to the casket and, you know, like, paid their dues and walked around. And we were in the front pew and they came up and hugged us and stuff and were like, I'm sorry, it's okay. But, um, that was the first time I'd ever seen my dad cry. Which that made me cry even more because... I'm really not much of a crier unless it's serious or something that I really love and care about. And sometimes it's just because I'm happy. Um, it was just really bad. We played Lay Me Down by Sam Smith, which I can, now I'm starting, like, well, since it's been a year, I can actually, like, listen to the song without crying or wanting to punch something. And then we played All of Me by John Legend. And as, like, as soon as Lay Me Down started, like, the music just started, and I'm just like, I still can't even believe it. Like, I just can't believe it. Like, I'm just gonna tell you, hug your parents. Kiss your parents. Do stuff with them. If you think they are annoying you, just hug them. Just be like, you know what? I don't even care. Like, if you argue with your parents, just, just tell them you're sorry. Like, it's not worth something. Especially if something happens to them and you're going to regret it. I've gone through so much. I'm still going through stuff. I'm a senior and I'm graduating. And I just think about my life and how much that she's not going to be there for. And that breaks my heart. Like my wedding. You're supposed to plan that with your mom. She's supposed to be there to see your dress. And it just sucks. 
and she was my best friend. Like, if I had a problem, I would talk to her. You know, like, you just don't find that with any, like, you just, you can't replace that conversation. Like, you know they're not going to judge you. They want what's best for you. Even if they don't seem like it. Even if you think, oh my gosh, like, why are you doing this? You're ruining my life. Like, just stop. They're really not. They're looking out for you. It's been a year now, this past February, and honestly, it still sucks every single day. I have, I've been to counseling, I got put on anxiety pills, because after she died, I thought that something really bad was going to happen to me. Like, I couldn't even sleep at night. I mean, it got okay after a while, and then it started to get bad again. And my moods were just not stable. It's just not good. I'm just going to tell you, if you still have your parents, please, just hug them. Talk to them about things that you wouldn't want to. Because you know what? At least they're there to yell at you. They're to tell you what's good and what's not. Tell you what's right and what's wrong. I don't want to go through these things by myself. But I have to. And I no longer live at home. I live with my boyfriend. So. And especially when you feel like you just don't have anyone. You might have friends, but it's not the same. You might have your sisters. My sisters, I might have them. But, you know, they hurt just as bad as I do. And they look for me to guidance. To guide them. To help them. And that's more pressure put on me. It really sucks not having someone to, to talk to. To ask, like, am I doing the right thing? What should I do about college? Like, let's say me and my boyfriend have an argument, or me and so and so have an argument. Like, I can't talk to her, anyone. I can't. It's just not right for her. And I just want to end this video on a positive note. <laughs> After I've sat here and cried forever. I just want all you guys to know there's a lot more to people that you don't see. There really is. If you are bullying someone or if someone is bullying you, just think. Like, you don't know what they're going through at home. I'm pretty sure none of half of my senior class knows that I've lost a parent. They don't know. A lot of people don't know. You know, sometimes, like, whatever people make jokes, and, like, you know how people do, like, your mom. They'll be like, well, I did this last night or whatever, and then they'll be like, your mom. Like, I'm just like, my mom's not here anymore. Like, like you just don't ever want to overstep that boundary with somebody. But I guess I have to look at this in a positive way. I'm going to end this video on a positive note. Um, she is no longer suffering. She is no longer in pain. She's no longer worrying about if she has to go to the hospital again. It would have been selfish of me to make her stay. Or if I could even make her stay. And have her go through that anyway. I just wish I could just like feel something. I cut myself off. And I only let myself like I have a tendency to just just I don't know. I'm just glad that she's not suffering anymore.
And for those of you who are good, who will ever see this, if you have your parents, show them that you love them. Even and remember that those little times when you just want to like punch them in the head, you know, if you just want to back talk. Just always make sure at the end of the day, the last thing that you say to them is positive. You don't want to end things on a bad note because that will make you feel so much worse about yourself. Those of you who have your parents, they love you. They do. Even if sometimes they get on your nerves or tell you things that you just don't want to hear. Be grateful. Honestly, all I can say is just be grateful. Because honestly, you just don't know when they're going to be taken from you. You just don't. Well, if you like this kind of story time, I will do more of getting to know me. Because there's so much that you guys just don't know. But... I know, I'm a hot mess right now. <laughs> if you like this video, please give it a like and a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. Um, I don't want you guys to subscribe, like, subscribe just because you feel bad. I want you to subscribe because of me. Maybe you'll like my channel. I do, I'm starting to do all kinds of things together. I might do some singing videos, I might do tag might do challenges you just never know what i'm gonna do i don't know but i hope that you guys like this video or if i helped you in any way kind of feel better or anything my sister's calling me okay well i'm gonna get off here and i'm gonna call her back but thank you guys for watching hopefully you watched it all the way God, here. watch it all the way through and you know what if you guys ever need somebody you know what just leave a comment below dm me on instagram however you want to reach me if you need help or if you need me or someone like i'm coming to you like if you need somebody i could be that somebody for you to go to i've been through a lot so if you need advice i've probably made that mistake or done something just as the same. I don't. <laughs> but again, thank you for watching. Gosh, my hair is like awful. But anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me some comments below. You know what? I need some song choices ideas so I can make some more singing videos if that's what you guys are interested in. Or just ideas for videos in general. If you know what? If you want to write me a list of questions, you know? Do a video on that. I'll do whatever you guys need me to. But I just want to leave this message here. You guys are great. You are a fantastic person. And if you don't think you are, then snap out of it. Get out of your own head. Trust me, I know. I've been there myself. Anyway, leave me a comment below. Give it a thumbs up. And I will see you later.